Hello and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies and uh, with this episode we're going to cap off our made for TV reviews. But before we get started, I uh, think I'm going to make a sidecar. Sidecar? I'm drinking martinis. You want a martini? Yeah, why not? Today we are doing 1982's Don't Go to Sleep. It is directed by Richard Lang. He's directed tons of TV stuff, but I wanted to point out one in particular of my favorites is the made-for-TV Kung Fu movie, <laughs> which came out between the original series and Kung Fu The Legend Continues. This stars Brandon Lee in one of his first roles. The movie stars uh, Dennis Weaver, and uh, I think a lot of us... Yeah, they're good martini. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 80s, 90s kids will probably know him from McCloud, where it's the uh, cop show where he's riding his horse in the streets. <laughs> Not Connor McCloud from the Clan McCloud? <laughs> Fight me, damn you! Heather? <laughs> Heather? <laughs> Valerie Harper is in this. Ruth Gordon is in this. She plays the grandmother. Robin Inico is in this, and uh, she plays the, uh, the little girl. The movie starts off with a family driving to their new abode. Mm -hmm. Grandma's gonna come and move in. She smells funny. <laughs> they get to the new house, and you know, they're setting things up. Kid's playing with his new Bunsen burner. The <laughs> flames are all super high. And the daughter, Mary, it's uh, their first night there, and she's in bed, and she's hearing voices. Bed starts on fire. The dad, you know, puts it out. Because her room's all burned up. <laughs> <laughs> it's all burned up. What do I know about cooking a shirt? <laughs> She's forced to go move in into her brother's room. And she keeps hearing these voices at night, screaming to mom and dad. Brother's getting pissed off because he can't sleep either. So he decides to play a little prank on her and records all these voices on his, like, big cassette recorder and freaks her out again so she's kind of being traumatized so one night she's had enough and she kind of crawls under her bed to kind of hide from everything who is there a little girl sitting staring back at her we find out it's her dead sister who had just died in a car accident just before they moved everyone is blaming themselves for the death of the daughter you know something happened but they don't really come out and say exactly what it is. Quiet evening after work and the dad's sitting there watching his news having a martini. A couple of martinis. How many of those have you had? You make me a sidecar. I'm drinking martinis. You can have a martini. <laughs> He's all had yeah. enough already. Mary keeps seeing these visions of her dead sister start to get a scheme, a, a plan together to start getting back at the family. Somebody puts the iguana under the grandmother's sheets and it scares the living shit out of the grandmother, so much so that they gotta call the cops. She's having a heart attack. The poor grandmother ends up dying. On the street, in <laughs> front of everybody. It's kind yeah. of a crazy scene. The family's all watching her, yep. dying, like staring down at the grandma and the grandma looks as she's having this heart attack and has, sees has another yeah, heart attack. Yeah. Mary and her brother Kevin are playing frisbee. The frisbee gets thrown on top of the roof of the house. So Kevin, he, you know, gets up on the fence and somehow gets on the roof. Like, I'm telling mom! Yeah, yeah. The door opens right in front of Kevin and pushes him off the roof. It cuts to the mom dropping that watermelon. Yeah, and so you know exactly what happened, right? The whole family is grief-stricken by this. The dad is in the kid's room trying to feed Ed and he can't find the food, right? He's like, oh, come on, He's buddy. dangling that rag in front of him? Like, what, are you feeding him some rag? <laughs> well, he doesn't know what he eats. He, he also doesn't anything. know what it is. He's like, I don't yeah. even know what this is. <laughs> And he kind of says to her, he's like, well, I can't handle this anymore. And she's, you can't handle what exactly? I've done everything. Well, I'll do I'll it. Do I'll it. do it. I'll do it. And he starts laying out his shirts and stuff. And so things finally start to get back to normal in the household. The dad is uh, in the tub <laughs> with his special bar table laid out across the tub <laughs> with Drinking more martinis. <laughs> He's got the radio going. Yeah, yeah, he's having a gay old time. The daughter comes in to kind of bl start blow-drying her hair. The radio falls in the tub. Zap. That's it. All the lights go off yeah. in the house. The mother's been out getting a pizza for the family. It looks like shitty-looking pizza. Yeah. When she opens it up, it looks all hard and... It's all oh, black Yeah, like, side. super overcooked and... <laughs> 
It's just cutting. It's like just fucking digging into like it because it's all burned. <laughs> Send that fucking pizza back. Now she notices the lights are out, so she gets him turned back on, goes upstairs to find her husband, and sees him in the in the tub and freaks out. Mary has the pizza cutter in her hand, and the two of them are left in the house. Watch the movie to find out what happens. Cool twist ending, too. You're left to kind of maybe put your own spin on things to a degree, right? The way this movie was written is that it could be either or where you don't know if it's really the ghost of the dead daughter mm -hmm. or if mary is actually just insane it's a neat spin on a kind of haunting movie because there is kind of a ghost involved yeah but it's not haunting the whole family or anything like that it's just telling the daughter mary what to do but it's not like books flying off the shelves or poltergeist type stuff grief yeah. Right. This movie has an undertones of grief and how a family deals with it. What happens if it's yeah. not dealt with properly? Yeah, it's a really deep movie in, in, in that regard. Grief and mental health, you know, alcoholism. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, the old days where, you know, the, the dads all had too much to drink yeah. and he wants to leave. And, and the, the grandma, grandma oh, stay <laughs> for another one. and Just one and more. Just one more. You know, he's, you know, the, the mom has drank less than the dad, but the dad insists on driving, yep, and he has got to drive, and the kids <laughs> are in the back. Like The acting is fantastic in this movie. Not Everybody like, is great in this. Usually kids are kind of, eh, they're subpar, but in this, it's no way. Yeah, Robert Inico as Mary is terrifying at moments. Dead stare, it's just like, oh man. Yeah put the fear of God into you, that kid. <laughs> the parents, like... Oh yeah, you feel what they're feeling. Dennis Weaver as the dad is uh, great. Also, for a made-for-TV movie, the kill count's actually kind of high. Children being killed and an old women, it, they don't hold any punches in this movie, really. The fact that it's for TV, they can't really go that one step further. Yeah, right? But I'm kind of glad they don't. Exactly. Because it keeps it classy. Dark and mm -hmm. shadowy and the, the, like the way they use lighting, like kind of the backlighting and it's it's, yeah. it's creepy you know yeah, it feels like a dream yeah the music helps to underscore the movie which is exactly what it's yeah. supposed to do whenever there's a tense scene you feel it you yeah. almost you know clutch your your pants right yeah. it's like Ooh. you know something to watch with the family even i think you could watch this watch this with the family and watch a family <laughs> die <laughs> that's perfect 1982's don't go to sleep is a great great made for tv movie with a bit of a different twist on like the family haunting scenario yeah and it touches on a lot of real world stuff check out don't go to sleep and then afterwards don't go to sleep <laughs> keep drinking <laughs>